I got the thumbs up to go ahead and get started. Um, so this says ingress nginx in 2024 plans, but you know some of these plans have been going on for a few years. So um, we're excited to talk about what we are planning to attempt to do this year. So we'll go ahead and start with a little bit of an intro. Um, most of you probably know me if you've been to this talk before. I'm a solutions architect now at Isovalent, maintainer of Kubernetes. I write those lovely release notes that you all don't read. I will continue to say that until I get more people reading them. Um, I've also done a bunch of stuff around the networking. Where I'm the author of Networking and Kubernetes, and I have an AWS course on A-Cloud Guru. And uh, yes, with that sweet, sweet beard, I do love to dress up as Gimli. So yeah, my name is Marco. Um, you can find me as Gakko on GitHub. I'm SRE at Giant Swarm, already about 10 years into open source and uh, working with Kubernetes since 2016. And I became a maintainer of the Ingress Nginx project just last November. So besides that, I'm interested in growing Canaveras plants at home. Be careful, don't be eaten by them. And we thank you for helping us fix the Helm charts. So if you have any Helm chart issues, it's his fault now. <laughs> so we're going to do a little bit of an overview um, of the complexity around Ingress Nginx as I like to remind folks why sometimes it takes a very long time for us to get releases out and all of the things that we maintain that aren't just the controller. Um, I'm going to talk about the fun trip with Nginx 125, uh, a little bit about Lua. Um, Y'all are probably tired of hearing me talk about Lua. How many Lua developers do we have in the room? I ask that question all the time too and I get the same response. Two, three. Um, Carlos, can you go get that guy? Thank you. <laughs> a tiny bit? Okay. Well, we're going to talk about this new fun thing. I don't know how new it is, but it's new to me. Um, Nginx JavaScript. Uh, everyone keeps asking about Gateway API. Obviously, we're going to talk about that. We've got a lot. I know there was a lot of fun new announcements that are coming up, a lot of things that are going to V1 now as well. So uh, we're going to have a conversation around that. And of course, we're going to talk about the Helm chart. Mark is going to talk about all of the awesome things he's doing to help make sure that we don't break things in the Helm chart releases anymore. And we have a surprise for you all this year. So I look forward to having a conversation about that. Go ahead, next slide. Uh, I don't remember. Oh. Oh, I remember, I forget this slide. So we have a lot that goes into the application that we have to manage. So obviously the controller is written in Golang. It's on an Alpine image. Um, we also have the Nginx versions. And there's a lot of code around the dynamic stuff with Lua. So there's a lot to maintain. We've got also, how many of you guys know that we have a QCTL plugin that doesn't work on uh, Mac AMD 64? We also help support two monitoring frameworks. We've got some Grafana dashboards that we put out there. Go ahead. Um, some third-party plugins. So there is also, we also do support any Lua plugin that you would like to run. So for our build time, we also compile Nginx. There's a lot of options. There's lots of things. So we have a custom Nginx build. So we have to do that across. Oh, I don't have that as the next one. I have seven static configs. So uh, 12 supporting container images. Um, 30 Nginx modules, and that's the one that I like to talk about a lot. Um, 43 dependencies compiled across four architectures for three Kubernetes versions for Helm and all of our static deployments. So we have a static deployment um, for AWS. We have one specifically. I think there might be an Oracle one in there now. So if you can't use Helm, um, we have static deployments for that. 69 command line flags. There's lots that goes in here, 100 plus. So for each one of these annotations and uh, command line flags, we have end-to-end -end tests for all of these. So there's a lot that goes into maintaining this. And I have two core contributors right now. And we're going to talk a little bit more about, we've been working with SIG Contributor X about defining the roles and the responsibilities so that we can have you know, folks come in and maybe help support updating those container images, managing those, um, making those a little bit more efficient. Um, maybe looking at, I mean, even just supporting the end-to-end -end tests. We have a container image that we do all of the testing, all of the builds happen inside of that container image, and someone has to maintain that. So that's a lot. Which leads us into sometimes why it takes us a long time to get to things like this. So with all of those configuration options, those cloud, uh, the clouds, um, the helms, the versions, um, there's a lot of testing that goes into just this and getting this release out. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot of work, and I just wanted to, again, uh, be aware of that. And please read the release notes. There were some breaking changes in that. How many people broke their clusters when they tried to deploy 110? 
Nobody? Good. Um, when we talk about this, we look at you know, some of the issues that we've had. So it took us from uh, when Nginx got released for 125, it took us about nine months to get there. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that why when we go talk about the Lua functionality. I think the other one was 11 months, and the last time we tried to do an upgrade, we actually broke things and we had a bunch of seg faults in our end to end tests. So we actually had to downgrade back to 119. Um, so when folks are you know, inputting things like, why did this happen or why did you do this? Like, there are specific reasons that we do talk about a lot in Slack and in our community meeting um, to discuss why we're doing the things that we're doing. So we try to make it as visible as possible what we're doing um, from those conversations. Uh, all of our community um, meeting notes are, you know, we have those um, in, uh, in GitHub and Google Drive and all those fun things. So when we get questions like this, um, we, know, we are aware that context is missed because it's really hard to follow those conversations in Slack. Um, it's also hard to follow why we're doing things that we're doing. Um, we are working, on, again, on getting better with why we do things in the release notes. But one of the big reasons that it takes us so long is that we are supporting a lot with uh, dynamic configurations via Lua. And we have to do, we depend on Open Rusty for all of those libraries, and so we have to wait for them to support it, and then we have to do our testing. So it does take some time for them to make that change, and then for us to integrate that change. Here's all of the things that we support via Lua that I'm aware of that we've looked at. There's probably more, um, but most of the dynamic functionality is based on Lua. So I have a new number to add to that previous slide. Um, go ahead and go to the next one. So with that um, issue, one of the thoughts that we've had, I think I've had the issue open for about a year. We had two issues open, one looking into supporting Rust as a replacement or Nginx JavaScript. Um, neither one of those got a lot of traction. So from this conversation, you go to the next slide. Um, the widest possible community using a popular programming language. Um, how many JavaScript developers do we have in the room? That's a lot more than the Lua ones. Not as many as I thought there would be. Carlos, write them down, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the idea with using Nginx JavaScript, or the rationale, is that it is supported by Nginx. So the thought would be that as they develop new functionality, it will be available with new versions, and we'll be able to do upgrades faster. Now, that is also a large overhaul. If you go back a couple slides to the... There's a lot of functionality here. Uh, I think the next slide was the right one, sorry. Um, I've seen examples of those two things. I have an X on here on dynamic plugins. We'll still allow dynamic plugins, but the idea is that we're going to try to migrate or attempt to migrate the functionality with NJS. Um, that's the one that we've decided on. I have to give Ricardo um, lanes to work on, otherwise he's going to go and try and do things like uh, with things with Wasm, and you know he's going to still try to learn Rust, but um, this is what the project is going along with with the uh, Lua functionality. So the thought with this is that in 111, which is the next minor release, we'll have the NJS libraries available so that folks can start experimenting with this on their own. And I'm going to start opening up issues and start working at how we can start migrating some of this functionality, if that functionality is even possible in the current NJS libraries and have this conversation with Nginx. So we're working on um, this. So this is one of the big things that I'm working on and looking for help from the community. So if this is interesting, uh, migrating from Lua to JavaScript or trying to do some of these fun things in, um, in JavaScript, um, please let us know. Um, again, we meet every Thursday, uh, 11 Eastern for our community meetings, and we are in Ingress Nginx dev in Slack. So that's one of the first major things that we're going to try to accomplish. How many people have put in a, uh, a GitHub issue asking us for Gateway API? OK, that person isn't here. Um, we've had a lot of ask around Gateway API support. Um, and we're going to start that implementation. So the idea with this is that as the functionality is available, we'll release alpha versions like we've done before. Um, I think we released a 125 Nginx alpha version. We did it with ch root. We did it with the v1 upgrade from via from the network API. So once we're ready 
to do that, we will do a major version upgrade to v2, and we'll release this with gateway class, gateway, and HTTP route support. So that support will be there, and again, asking for the community, if there is functionality that you do want, it will be available for folks to implement and help us with that functionality. Um, as folks ask for more, right, I'll open up issues for each one of these pieces of functionality, and we'll ask for feedback on what we should be implementing um, from either from a maintainer's perspective or the folks that are going to help want to help with Gateway API. Um, so we've got a lot of asks from the community around this, and we're trying to get this pushed through. So my goal is to have a beta, or at least be ready to try to do the V2 by um, by Salt Lake City. Go ahead, next. Yeah, so that being said, so far, thank you very much. Um, all of those changes James just uh, told you will also affect the way we are modeling our Helm chart right now. And uh, before we can actually implement them, we are kind of agreed that we need to improve the situation around testing our Helm chart and also releasing them. Some of you might remember this accidental release of 483. Well, that was one of those mistakes we currently have in our CI, but we want to work on that. Regarding testing, so uh, we recently implemented the uh, Helm unit test plugin that basically takes the manifest and you can write your test cases for that. We already have a bit of a coverage for some of our manifests, but a uh, first step would be implementing at least minimum tests for all of the manifests in the Helm chart. And that way, each time someone is opening a PR to our Helm chart, for example, they can just go and extend the tests we already have. It makes it, uh, things a lot easier then. Second, we have integration tests. They are being executed by the chart testing CLI of the Helm project. Right now, there are some CI values around, but they kind of have the wrong naming pattern, and therefore, they are not getting picked up at all. And so, in the end, I think we'll also need to reorganize the integration tests we have right now and make them match with real-world use cases. So, uh, that's what I think currently takes around 45 minutes every time someone's pushing to a pull request. And uh, maybe we can even improve that and get your feedback if your change is breaking something quite earlier. Overall, I think those changes to the testing thingies will improve the way reviewers actually can review our pull requests. In the end, you don't need to know each and every detail of how Helm is being implemented or whatsoever. But as long as there are tests, I don't need to do, I explain that to you, I guess. As long as, as there are tests, you can be quite confident that the change is at least not breaking something. And that is what we already have in the controller with all the, I think, more than 100 E2E tests. And I'd like to reach that in the Helm chart too. Yeah, uh, back to the release workflow. After changes got implemented, we want to push them out. And uh, right now, there is kind of an automism which just releases a new Helm release, a chart release, uh, once someone is pushing the version or bumping the version in a chart YAML. That led to the before mentioned uh, 483, which wasn't a patch release at all, but included minor, not if not even yeah, new functionality major changes. And yeah, there yeah were, because there we tuned the security context a lot there, and uh, we just, in the last weeks, got a bit of feedback that uh, this is somehow working, but in some user um, environments, it's also not working. And yeah, so in the end, what I want to say, accidental patch release, we weren't really good on that, and we want to do that better in the future. So how do we do that? Uh, first step would be actually having all the chart-related changes in change logs. Right now, it's just a regular expression doing something like if the commit message contains chart, then put it in the change log. That's not how it should work. And after that, uh, we also want to I was just happy that the regex worked. Yeah, at least <laughs> it's a regex. I mean, you can also pick them by hand. Yeah, in the end, we also want those change logs to be included in the GitHub release. Right now, you only see something like ingress nginx, helm chart, version number, that's it. 
there's no nothing about the changes at all. And um, I think here again, if for example James James is doing a release in the end, then it should be as easy um, as just doing some comments, and then you got all the changes in the change log. After that, when we then have a secure and reliable basis for testing and releasing stuff, we can also focus on actual like feature changes, or in that case, uh, finally dropping pod security policies because they've been deprecated in version 1 to uh, 21 of Kubernetes, removed in 125, and those versions are already quite old, but we still have them, we have uh, pod security policies in the chart. You can still enable them. I think for someone running on old Kubernetes version, that's really required, okay, but in the near future, we should really drop them. What's the successor for them? There's a pod security admission, and the whole pod security admission controller knows for now um, several so-called pod security standards. We are already compliant to the most restrictive one, it's the restricted one, actually, since version 4.9. That's uh, the change we accidentally already introduced in 4.8.3. Yeah. Um, but this is not applying to change the change root mode, since the change root mode uh, requires some uh, more privileges and therefore breaks the pod security standard restricted. In the end, so we are in a kind of a soft mode right now because we are supporting it, we are compliant to it, but there is no enforcement. So even if you have the pod security admission controller enabled whatsoever, um, the namespace is not configured for it. And that's something we like to change in Helm or at least the way you can then deploy the chart to a cluster so the newly created namespace also and already uh, includes all the labels required for the pod security admission controller. And since we just recently um, had some issues with provider specific stuff, we will also try to improve the situation around that. Right now, our chart, the real Helm chart, is mostly supporting like each and every provider since most of the time you just need to add some annotations, for example, to your load balancer. But the static deployment manifests we uh, provide right now, they are not, not uh, so good at that yet. For example, on AKS or on Azure in uh, general, you probably need to add an annotation so the health check is uh, finally working. That's not occurring when you're an external traffic policy local. But anyways, that's something we could at least document or even improve in the static manifests and uh, also put some information about that. I'm, inside I'm not sure we have a static manifest for AKS. Uh, we don't have them yet, yeah. but we will who's, probably. Who's running Azure AKS with Ingress Nginx and would be willing to help write a static manifest for that? <laughs> and the hands go down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's uh, too complicated. At least I know someone who needs to support customers doing that, sadly. Yeah, anyway, um, uh, so there is a lot of stuff around load balancer setup, security stuff um, when it comes to providers. AKS, for example, is also recommending you to turn off the automatic mounting of the service token. Side note, Ingress Nginx needs API access, so please don't do that. It's just breaking everything. Um, so you can easily ignore that warning or yeah, we should add documentation about that because doing it manually just to get the automism disabled, that's a bit difficult and I guess we won't support that because then users are like, yeah, I set it up manually. Yeah, you did it, but you did it wrong. Oh, okay, then it's not our fault in that case. Anyway, so far for providers, I think this will be more important in the upcoming months. And uh, yeah, go ahead, next slide. That's something not really dedicated to the chart because it will affect the whole controller in the end. So there needs to be something done at the Go level also. Um, right now we have the container, we have only one container for the controller and the Nginx, they are all together. And imagine you have a huge cluster, 200 nodes, 2,000, 3,000 ingresses. I know environments where it's the case. Um, and yeah, in the end, your Nginx, your ingress controller will consume about 
three and a half gigabyte just for that static chunk uh, without even handling any traffic. And now imagine you're actually getting traffic like a lot of load and HPA is scaling up to 100 pods. Fine, then you have 100 times the three and a half gigabyte of static chunk. That's, for example, one reason why we, in the end, want to split up the control plane, so the Angress Nginx controller, and the data plane, which is the Nginx. Another reason for that are some security pitfalls. I mentioned change route before, um, for example, where we uh, want to prevent that someone who is actually getting into the Nginx can access the service account token because with that service account token of the ingress controller they can basically access all secrets in the whole cluster since we need to access certificates and yeah so splitting that up will also probably fix some security stuff but in the end it requires a lot of work and that's probably also something for version two and then yeah i think that also affects i think some folks have asked us for like rootless containers and they've also asked us for like read-only containers um, and it's a little difficult um, for that. I know it, it is possible, so those things, doing this will help us with that perspective. So um, we're working on that. Um, no, no timing, because I know Ricardo has been working a lot on the, um, on the 125 upgrade, and I think this, this will be his next um, priority. I'll have to tell him, and I'll keep showing him this recording that he has to get this done this year, as I'm looking at the camera, Ricardo. <laughs> Yeah, and one last thing for the wise, I guess we have separate dependencies. We already tried to, for example, remove curl from the image many, many times. It's not working. And uh, yeah, if you have different containers, I think that will not be a big issue anymore. So for example, for remote code execution whatsoever, if we only have the dependencies, the binaries in the image we really, really need and we split them up, then it's also going to be more secure for that reason. Okay, next one. And I think we also brought a surprise today, but that's what James is talking about now. So if we're going to implement Gateway API, um, it's not really Ingress Nginx anymore. So we have an ask from the community that I think you all will all actually help out with this one. Um, we're actually going to rename the project. And we're asking for your help. And please don't make it Ingress McBody face. <laughs> so when we will do the V2 launch with the Gateway API support is when we'll do the project change. And like I said previously, that is slated for Salt Lake City. Um, that is also recorded, and we'll see how well that goes with the implementation. I do want to give a shout out to Nick Young and um, Rob Scott for helping us out. We've, they've given us a lot of direction so far on the gateway implementation. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, or thoughts on that, we again are in the Ingress Nginx Slack dev. Good. Oh, I have other thoughts. Um, but anyway, one of the things that I did previously discuss is that getting involved um, it's not just code. We talked a lot about our code contributions just now because that's what we are working on as maintainers. But we do need, like I said, there's, a, there's not an AKS static manifest. There's lots of nuances to each one of the cloud providers. So it would be helpful if we had cloud-specific examples. Or if you're doing something interesting and weird with Ingress Nginx, um, please document it and put it out there for other folks to read and learn about. We'll accept those PRs. Documentation always needs refreshed, um, updated with exam new examples, um, new versions, things like that. I've already talked about the JavaScript developers, so we're looking at that and also working on with Nginx getting support with the uh, NJS library. And we've talked about CI, end-to-end -end testing, and image support. Um, we do a lot in GitHub. We don't do a lot in the actual cloud environments. Um, so working on things like that, replicating issues. Um, we, I think we probably need to start adding some more labels for like cloud-specific things and just getting folks to help out to test those for us. Because um, sometimes it can take you know, a half a day to set up an environment to replicate an issue, and you multiply that out by the 400, last count I saw, 485 issues. It takes a long time sometimes to triage some of these issues. Um, so we are definitely looking at for folks to help support and triage issues. And we are working on, again, with SIG Contribute X to more finely grain define these roles and responsibilities to help out with the um, um, contributor ladder so we can get some folks, you know, 
added in as maintainers and approvers on specific specific things. So um, lots of ways to get involved. That's not just the scary Lua to JavaScript or the massive gateway API implementation. So if you have any thoughts or questions around that, please let us know. Go ahead. Um, like I said, Ingress Nginx Dev um, users is a support channel. Um, we got the new contributor doc, which I know needs revamped because I think it's just a straight copy from the Kubernetes contributor doc. Um, we have our meeting notes, and then we have the playlist where you can listen to us argue about how to do all of this fun, all these fun things. And we'll start probably having design sessions too and reviews on the Gateway API implementation. And that's the feedback survey. Um, I think we've got, yeah, I knew it'd end a little early because Ricardo wasn't here to talk. He loves to talk about Ingress Nginx and what he does on Sundays with it. Um, any questions, comments, thoughts? I have stunned you all into silence. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you.